My name is Logan Evans, and I am a military policeman in Okinawa, Japan. Dispatch, November 1. Show me adjacent to building 3425 in reference to a walking patrol. Sweet. All right, so dispatch knows where we are, which is really important. Uh, they need to know where you are at all time because say something happens, uh, we get in there and we uh, encounter something, they're going to they're gonna want to know, have that on record that we were here. Um, so it's always good to communicate with dispatch so they'll know where you are. Uh, so we're going to go do this walking patrol real quick, and uh, we will get back. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> hey. Let's go. What is up now with the beast checking in? Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, you know, beginning intro, that nice epicness. So now we're gonna roll into the actual Q&A, guys. So you guys have been asking me constantly. You guys have been requesting me to bring a military police officer. So that's what we have here today, guys. So we got Mr. Logan to our right. Oh God. Oh, oh my God. I'd like to introduce yourself, the people, who you are, where you're from, and why you joined the Marine Corps. For sure. All right, what's up? Uh, my name's Logan. I am from a small town in Georgia. Uh, not many people, so I'm kind of like a country boy. <clears throat> um, I joined the Marine Corps because I wanted to set a really good example for my, my little brothers. Uh, they look up to me. They mean the world to me. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to, to you know, show them that, that they, can, they can do something really great in life. They can excel. Things like that, and also for my for my mother, I uh, wanted to make her proud, so that's why I joined the Marine Corps. Yeah, and you enlisted like right after high school, or right after two days two days after I graduated, I was on the bus heading down to to oh, Paris. Shoot. Two days. Yeah. Okay, so literally, as soon as he graduated, he was like, "Hey, say less. I'm gonna go right now." So, um, as a military police officer, what are some of the things that you do on a daily? You know, um, as far as you know, uh, responding to some calls or you know situations and stuff like that. So on a daily basis, uh, some of the calls that we can expect out here in Okinawa, Japan, um, are things like assault, assaults, especially with uh, the Marines kind of missing home. It's um, it, it's, it's kind of hard for them, right? It's like so they a lot of people like to drink, and uh, mm -hmm. with alcohol comes violence. Violence. Uh, so we respond to a lot of assaults, um, and actually a lot of fire alarm calls. We respond to medical assists. So anytime someone gets hurt, maybe they break their leg running, something like that. Uh, we respond to pretty much any anything out of the ordinary on this island, we respond to. Um, being, you know, far away, being in Okinawa, Japan, obviously, you know, people get stressed, people, you know, decide to drink sometimes, which I do not condone, guys, do not drink if you are underage, and, you know, just don't even drink, period. Um, if you are of age, then may, by all means, like I always say, guys, say, um, moderation is key. So, um, that being said, you know, a lot of the times, you know, sometimes, you know, fights go on. So these are the guys that come in, you know, banging through doors and stuff like that. I, I see them all the time walking around, you know, PMOs here, PMOs here. So people always like, oh, dude, no, PMOs going to ruin the party. So these are the guys, uh, you know, first responders. So we uh, definitely appreciate them because they do keep us safe as uh, Marines and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Why did you choose that MOS? I chose this MOS because, you know, I, I was talking to my recruiter and I wanted something to you know, advanced me in life professionally, like really fast. I just wanted to have that professional aspect about me. And he said, well, you should probably check out military police. Um, the reason is because in the military police field, you're dealing with people sometimes that are that are higher enlisted, higher officers, and you've got to learn to be professionally tacked with them, especially if they're breaking the law. They're like, no one's above the law. So you've got to learn how to be professionally tacked with them and let them know that they are there in the wrong. And uh, so you really got to work on your professional skills, your communication skills, thing like that. And that's why I went with the military police route. Well, that's actually a really good reason. Um, yeah, because I hear a lot of you guys do deal with, you know, every rank, you know. It, right. You know, varies from E1 to whatever officer ranks, you know, to generals, whatever it may be. You're going to go down this path. It, it definitely does give you that characteristic as far as, you know, keeping professionalism and mannerism uh, towards others. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's an issue you might run to a lot. You know, a lot of people just because of your rank, you they you feel they feel like as if they're above you, and they're like, oh, you're not gonna do this and this to me. But that's where you step in. It's like, hey, billet or you know, PMO. That's that's my billet. You know. Absolutely. That's that's something that we actually almost on a daily basis we encounter something like that in regards to our rank, 
uh, and having the authority that we do. Because as military police officers, when you're wearing the badge, you automatically have a like a next level of authority that's just pretty much superior, even over even over ranks. Like that's why I'm saying at the same time you can't disrespect a higher officer, a higher enlisted, mm -hmm. but you have to be professionally tacked with them to let them know that they are in the wrong and they're not above the law as well. Right. That 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 makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know, you can't obviously you can't go up to them and be like, hey, yo, officer, you know, hey, you're in the wrong. What's up? Get behind your back. Let me put these handcuffs. You know, you yeah. gotta be professional. You gotta be the sir. You are in the wrong, and I'm gonna have to take you in stuff like that. So, are you planning on staying in, or are you planning on getting out? I plan on staying in. The reason why is because the military in general is just is just such a good setup for me. Uh, Stability, uh, the benefit, it's just amazing. Of course, you gotta work for that. Like, everyone knows the military is not all, you know, cupcakes and rainbows. Days. Yeah, all yeah. that stuff. But, so you gotta work for it, but it's definitely, especially if you wanna, like, I wanna have a family, I wanna have, like, kids, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's it's just good support and stability for me. And, you know, I never have to worry about not having the roof over my head, stuff like that. So, I do plan on staying in. Choose your almost wisely, choose something that you plan on doing that could benefit you and translate perfectly in the civilian sector. So if he were to get out right now, guys, he could fall into like, you know, being an actual uh, police officer. The that we get, especially because it's known that military police officers, we have to get OC sprayed, we have to get tased, stuff like that, which is like kind of the dreaded thing that everyone thinks about when they're thinking about MPs. But, but yeah, every certificate that you get and all the training will transfer over into the civilian world. So if I decided to get out, I could get a, a very good job as a civilian police officer and everything would transfer over. So oh, wow. oh, um, another question that our, you know, the nomination is wondering is, you know, what is your typical day in the life? And I know I did play some previous clips, but what is your average day, especially being, you know, a corporal now, um, you know, leading other Marines and stuff like that. What is your average day? Okay. The average day for military police in my shoes is wake up if you're on shift. Okay, so let me start off with this. The way that shift works is, is a Panama schedule. So you're gonna work two days on, two days off, three days on, and then two days off. So every other weekend you're gonna have a 72, but you're also gonna be working a 72 every other weekend. Oh. So the days that we work, I'm night shift, so I'm gonna wake up at around, uh, let's say 16.45, uh, get ready, leave my room at 17, go to PMO, and uh, you know, load up, we got, the basic loadout that we put on is we have our second chance vest, bulletproof vest. Um, our utility belt, we have a 9 mil. We have 30 rounds, taser, OC, radio, and handcuffs. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a first aid kit, that's what we always have with us. So we'll, we'll get all loaded up, all of our gear, and then I'll conduct guard mount. Uh, me being a patrol supervisor, I have to make sure that all my Marines are good to go. They have their notebook, pen, all their, all their gear squared away, and they're ready for the night. And then uh, we'll conduct that. We'll have the day shift to pass on anything that happened or anything that they saw that was suspicious, stuff like that. That way we can keep an eye out for it mm -hmm. through the night. And um, and then after that, I'll send on the, the units, tell them what they're going to do, where they need to go, put a Marine on the gate. That way you can, you know, have some sobriety checks, right. make sure make sure everyone's following the law, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then we're just patrolling around, doing some active policing pretty much all night until... Um, until we get a call for service. And that can happen at any minute, we never know. And uh, no two calls of service are the same. So we, we really, there's no way to ever be like 100% efficient mm. at everything because every single call is different. Everything's gonna be, you don't know how you're gonna react to it, you know, uh, so you gotta be prepared. As far as, you know, uh, physical fitness, are there some of the things that you can expect, you know, maybe like PT or anything like that or? Absolutely. So. You can definitely expect to have a, a pretty pretty strict PT schedule being an MP. The reason why is because say say you get in a situation where yeah, I mean you got some some bigger guys, you know, because in the military there's some there's some huge guys, huge guys. And you know, you're coming up with them and you're like, okay, I'm gonna need you to put your hands behind your back and I can be like, no. Like you've definitely gotta you gotta train to be able to handle situations. Um, that's why it's definitely important to hit the gym, kind of get some muscle on you, stuff like that. Yeah. That way you can you can definitely hand, handle some bigger people if you need to. And uh, absolutely, running is another one of the things that you're gonna have to do because say someone takes off and you got a foot pursuit, like mm -hmm. you're gonna have to be able to have a lot of stamina 
to to catch them stuff like that so absolutely pt is definitely paramount when it comes to the mp field mm -hmm. absolutely and that's i that's with every marine um also yeah. guys is don't don't get that twisted where it's like oh i don't marines don't pt blah blah like no we we wake up every morning and uh you know we got a pt you know keep ourselves in shape because at the end of the day hey we're all riflemen all right it, that's just that's just the nature of the beast and um, you know if, if something were to break out hey you got to be ready whatever happens you know hey um you got to be ready to pick up a rifle and do what you got to do as a marine so always keep that in mind you are a marine before your mos um so but anyways guys um if you guys want to see a part two be sure to comment down below and drop a thumbs up in this video let me know what you guys think if you guys want to see more of logan well actually you guys will be seeing more logan because guess what guys he is a fuego athlete so yes fuego energy athlete uh logan is officially sponsored by myself and so is uh you know my other two individuals that will be announced later on hopefully we can have them on the channel and stuff like that so if you guys let me grab your you know fuego energy be sure to check out the description use code uh logan actually that's that's the code logan yeah. Low, use code Logan, save 10% off guys and get your fuego, alright? Should be arriving sometime mid-January, so definitely stay tuned for that. Anyways guys, aside from that, let me know what you guys think. If you guys like to see more of this, you know, let me know in the comment section below. Do not be afraid, okay? Do not do not leave this video without leaving some, some sort of feedback, okay? Because a lot of you guys stop by and just don't leave feedback. But anyways, I just want to, you know, thank you for coming out, man. You know, Logan took out of his time on his Friday, you know, he literally took an Uber from his base all the way over here, you know, just to make this video because that's how bad he wanted it that's how bad all right he didn't make an excuse like hey no but i can't make it blah 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 you know he he that's how bad he wants it and i commend people like that i appreciate people like that that are willing to go for it so go check him out his instagram his youtube whatever you guys gotta do go check him out in the description he's got some great content coming up guys he's definitely stay tuned for that but aside from that remember guys stay hungry stay home what's your life not as you keep doing you and go about your day don't listen to people in silence remember we got one life your life make sure to have been in the silence mode by life i love you guys and stay tuned for the next video in two days from now that's true. 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 That's true.